I've, I've begun again to read a lot of nonfiction. I don't like fiction. Uh, my 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 flip way of describing it is that I'm not interested in other people's dreams and nightmares. I'd rather read about the world, the universe, humans, history, archaeology. I, I read periodicals to be abreast of the drift of thought in, in the country and, and, and opinion and, and where, the, where the fault lines are. Uh, so I read a lot of internet, uh, obviously, um, but most all fact-based, all, all opinion and fact-based. Um, and uh, as I said, I'm reading the, the book I'm reading now is called The Expanding Universe, or just Expanding Universe. The one before I wrote, read two just before it, about the quantum physics revolution in the 20s with Niels Bohr at the Copenhagen Institute when Einstein was already getting to be old hat and, and, uh, and how these young Turks, uh, it, what, it, what struck me, and I mentioned it to Jerry, was all of these great physicists in the 1920s who put together quantum mechanics and quantum theory. In other words, Newton's laws of motion, which affect the planets and everything we can see, don't work on the subatomic scale. You need quantum mechanics. That was all developed in the 1920s. Every one of those guys who did that, and there were a handful, did it when he was 25, 26, 27 years old. When they reached 30, they were beginning to look over their shoulders, wondering if they'd published enough things, if they had their names on enough theories. And when they got to their 40s, there was the exceptional one, like Bohr, Niels Bohr, who then became the grand Potter Familias, you know, who was able to kind of bring the youngsters together and direct them and listen to them. So it, it was fascinating to see how much of that important work was done by, you know, we, we think of as 20. Today, they're still living with their parents. <laughs> <in 20 laughs> 